Dr. Lehman, welcome. Great to join you. On this health podcast, we've spoken a lot about the importance of dietary fat and eating enough fat. But what about protein? You see, if we don't get enough protein, this can cause inflammation, disease, accelerated aging, and an inability to lose weight. So Dr. Lehman, my first question, how many people watching, maybe it's men or women or even children, how many people are eating enough protein a day? Well, based on the uh, Dietary Guidelines Committee evaluation that's, you know, the 2025 right now, uh, they suggested about 45% of Americans are eating below the recommended amounts. Um, and that's, you know, you have to kind of think that through. It's the healthy eating index that they're using for that. So that's not, that's not exactly the same as the minimum RDA. And the other thing to keep in mind is that's it's not a heterogeneous number. Uh, it's far more women are below the requirement than men. Why do you think women, because I noticed this as well, um, women generally don't eat enough protein. Why do you think that is? Uh, the the two cat it falls into two age groups. Uh, women over sixty, uh, it's over forty percent are below the RDA, uh, and the other group is between eighteen and twenty two. So in the older group, uh, it's a calorie and taste issue. Uh, they happen to prefer carbs to protein, and so they they eat more carbs and less protein. Uh, they also require a lot less calories. Uh, we lose, the resting energy metabolism goes down about 100 calories per decade. So by the time you get to 60 to 70, you've lost 400 calories per day. So you have to get your nutrients in a lot less calories. The younger group, uh, they're doing it for either uh, emotional, moral decisions or whether or they're just doing it for body appearance. They think that, that somehow that's better for how they're going to end up looking. So I think it's more vanity than than uh, the older population. They think that being more vegetarian is going to make them thinner. Let's talk about the importance of protein for different aspects of the body. First, pertaining to muscle. Why is protein so important for muscle? First thing you have to understand about protein, and this is muscle, but it's whole body. Um, the, bo the main need for protein is that we're constantly repairing and replacing proteins in our body. We have to make between 250 and 300 grams of new protein every day just to stay healthy. That means you replace essentially every pro the equivalent of every protein in your body four times every year. So how, where you get the protein to do that's important. And then you compound that with we know that as you get older, the efficiency of what you do that becomes more difficult. It goes down. So when you're young, when you're 25, when you're 22, uh, eating a lower protein diet, eh, it seems like it works pretty well for a while. But after you get sort of around 40, 35, 40, now the efficiency and the calories both start to be a problem. You can't, have, you can't eat as many calories and you actually need more protein. Whether you're growing or not, growth is actually a very minor part of protein needs. You only can, your maximum deposition of new protein during growth is maybe five grams per day, but you need to make 300 just to stay healthy. So that's a, that's a different way of thinking about the importance of protein. Yeah, so every protein in the body has what we call a half-life. It only lasts so long. It has a lifespan. So there are enzymes in the liver that are replaced every hour. We know that red blood cells are replaced every 30 days or so. We know that blood proteins are replaced every 12. Muscle proteins are replaced every 15 to 20 days. So, you know, we, we, they all have, and, and then connective tissues like a hundred days. That's why if you, you know, care, tear an Achilles tendon, it takes you months to recover because connective tissue has a very slow turnover. So anyway, there's this constant rate of what we call protein turnover going on. Every protein has a little different time span, but again, we have to replace the equivalent of 300 grams per day with this protein turnover concept. And we think a big part of aging is how well you do that. 
You know, if you do it inefficiently, that's part of aging. That's why people who have higher protein turnover, have higher protein diets, they tend to have better skin characteristics. They have better hair. It's just part of that repair and replacement process.